Well, I do declare. Hey guys, it's me, Blair St. Clair, and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video. So if you can't tell by now, maybe looking at this title, I left this video completely and entirely up to you. I went to Twitter, and if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure that you are, so that way next time you can be involved in this process. But I went to Twitter and I asked you guys to ask me your questions. All the things that you wanted to know about me, anything that you may have had a question about, that you wanted answer, that you wanted, you know, more tea on, you wanted me to dish on, to spill on, or just, you know, put a little shade over. There were a lot of questions, and I haven't looked at any of them yet. So this is going to be really interesting, but I'm really excited to see what you guys have asked me. So, I don't know what you want to know. Do you want to know about my personal life? Do you want to know about what's going on in my career right now? What I'm focusing on? What projects I'm working on? I don't know if you want to know about my dog. If you want to know, who knows? So I'm just, I'm scared. I'm curious. And I'm just ready to dish and spill. So let's get this video going. Okay, so the first question is, if they ever did an All Stars in teams again, God forbid, LOL, who would you want to work with? Oh, that's a good question. Well, first and foremost, if they ever do All-Stars in teams again, let's just hope not. Let's just hope that never happens again. We're never going to talk about it, that it happened the first time, and hard pass. But if I had to choose someone to work with on an All-Star season of RuPaul's Drag Race for the future, I would probably pick... Ooh, this is really hard. Miss Cracker? question mark? Maybe? I don't know. You guys know I get along with Miss Cracker and the Vixen really, really well. We're really close friends. They do what they do really well, and I do what I do well, and like we all have different interests, but somehow like we, we get along really well. So I think that, you know, a combination of one or two of those, Miss Cracker or the Vixen, could be really good. We just have good chemistry. Like, they, we work well together. I mean, not like super well together, I guess, because like, they were the team that I was in when I got eliminated from RuPaul's Drag Race, and then Vixen eventually ended up sending me home on Drag Race, so... I guess, like, in actuality, maybe we're not meant to work together. Next question. Who is your favorite non-Ru girl? I have so, 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 so many favorite non-Ru girl queens. Um, well, I'm obsessed with Jackie Beat. Jackie B is a legend. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed with her. And, and like, sidebar, er, side note, just because a queen is not on, has never been on, or maybe will never audition to be on RuPaul's Drag Race, does not mean that they are not incredible and amazing in their own right. So let that be known, because there are many queens that have never been on RuPaul's Drag Race, or maybe may never want to be, that are absolutely sickening. So I love Jackie Beat. She's one that I'm obsessed with. Also, she was so kind to let me film a little bit of Now or Never, my music video, the first one that I ever released, in her house. So if you have gone back and you watched Now or Never and that music video, the beginning of that when I am in my little housewife get up and my little housewife look, that's actually filmed in her kitchen. A lot of that was in her house. So I'm really grateful to Jackie B also for letting me use her house to make a video, so thanks girl. But I also love her. Um, I'm also obsessed with Vicky Vox. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Vicky Vox. She used to be in the girl group um, DWV with Detox and Willem. She's an incredible, incredible actress and vocalist. She was also in Little Shop of Horrors playing the plant. And uh, I, I didn't get to see it, but I saw video footage and I saw, uh, I heard audio footage of it. In Incredible. Like the talent is unreal. But then I also have some queens that haven't got the same recognition that I have from the same place that I'm from. So my drag sister Ida K, I love her so dearly. And I really, really hope that one day um, maybe she auditions to be on Drag Race or does the show because she has so much potential and power behind her to do the show. Absolutely love her and adore her. So if you don't follow Ida K, follow her on social media. She is amazing. It also took me forever to realize that her name, Ida K, is like. I D K. I don't know. Wow. I guess the bleach is really getting to my hair now. The question of the day Would you go on All Stars? That is a question I get asked so often. And I'll break it down for you in a couple different steps and some different truths and some teas because we need to 
we need to talk about this. So for All Stars 4, right after finishing season 10 and coming right out of my season of RuPaul's Drag Race, a lot of people asked, would you do an All Stars season? Would you go back to All Stars 4? And at that time, the answer was no. I would not do All Stars at that point in time. That point of my life, I was just learning so much. And I'm still learning every day. I think that to be a really great entertainer or do what you love to its best level is that you're always pushing yourself to learn more and to grow and to elevate. And I think that if you're kind of stagnant and plateauing and you're not trying to learn, that's when what you do kind of just you know, sits there. And I want to reach so many more levels, so I was still like really learning at that point in time in my life. And I knew for me to go back on a TV, I was still in the process of learning to like be where I wanted to be. So like now, having another year later, you know, I've had a lot of time since filming Drag Race. I've grown up a lot. I've matured a lot. I have learned a lot in all the fields that I, that I love and that I wanted to excel more in. I don't know if I would do the show, so let's put that question aside, but how do I think I would do if I decided to do the show? I think that I have just really, really worked very hard on me, on who is Blair St. Clair and the creative brand of who she is. Before I did Drag Race, I came from a community and I came from a group of people that kind of told me, this is what drag is here, this is how drag is accepted here, this is like how you do drag. And I thought like, okay, well to be a drag queen, I have to wear like big eyelashes that touch my eyebrows. I have to pad my hips out to both sides of the room. Like I have to fit this mold drag stereotype of pageantry drag. And now I've learned, you know, traveling across the world, what kinds of drag aesthetics I like and what I like about fashion, what I like about entertainment, what I like about art, what I like in music. Like I've really honed in on what it is that I like and I've had my voice shine through all that. So I've had a lot of time to really experiment and find out what I wanted to pursue with my career. So I've had much more opportunity and experience and I think that if I went back in the competition, I think people at home would watch and still see the same true essence of who I am and my same soul of the same character that I was. But I've really changed a lot. I really, I think people would be very surprised. I don't know if I would do All Stars. I would really have to think about it. it it's, it's a huge endeavor, um, a lot to do and a lot to conquer. But I think that if I decided to do it, I think I would really shock people. And I think people would be really excited to see a new Blair. If you had to pick another career, what would it be? That's interesting because a lot of people don't know this, but drag wasn't the original, original goal for me. Um, I have fallen in love with drag and love it, but I didn't really know what drag was. I, I wanted to be on Broadway. I am trained in uh, vocal performance. I'm a tenor. I'm actually a counter tenor. I can sing like way up into the rafters. I have some jazz and tap dance training without heels as a boy. I've since taken a lot of classes in heels to really strengthen my aesthetic. And acting, I, I've taken, even today, I'm still in so many acting classes. I was like, you know, if I have to make it in the Book of Mormon, which I did audition many times. I did get a few callbacks of the Book of Mormon actually, um, but RIP, that never worked out for me very well. That was kind of the path I thought I was going to take. Like I really wanted to just perform and be a character and live and breathe on stage for the rest of my life. And I got cast in a musical called La Caja Fall that opened up so many doors for me. That opportunity probably changed my life because I was cast as a drag queen in that show. And I developed this drag character and the aesthetic of Blair St. Clair from doing that show. It just opened up so many doors for me. It was like, hey, this is what drag is. And now that you're doing the show and you're going to be a drag queen in the show, maybe like look at the drag community around you. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is just like a hobby. Like I'm just, I'm here to you know to learn a little bit and to do more performance so that way one day like it'll be a resume builder and I can you know go to that next level. Well, little did I know that all of that performance building and like all of that creativity that I was like, you know, fostering within myself kind of opened up this world of drag. If I wasn't doing drag, I would probably still be a starving artist really trying out, which <laughs> let's be real, I'm still a starving artist. Um, but today, I would say that, you know, if drag were to be at that time where I said like I need to find something else to do 
or I definitely have a lot of different plan B, C, D, and E. I have always loved makeup so much. And you guys know that like watching my channel that I love makeup. Makeup is like expression to me and art and I would love to be a makeup artist. I would love to also continue to develop my career as a musician. I love teaching different things that I've learned. You know, whether it be about makeup or whether it be about anything that I do, I, I, I just literally love talking to people. So I don't know, maybe if, if, if drag weren't the career choice or if you know one day I had to choose another, it would definitely be to teach or to be a makeup artist. Who would you want to play you in a Broadway musical about your life? Okay. Well, if I had to find an actress to play Blair and with all the makeup on and, and, and looking like her glorious glamorous self, I would definitely choose Dove Cameron. If you guys know Dove, Dove and I um, have kindled a little bit of an online relationship. I really, really want to meet her in real life, and um, I think she is stunning. And um, we've actually been compared to each other a few times, which is the biggest compliment to me because she is an angel. She is literally like a glorious, beautiful angel that I wish to attain to be, like, please. But if I had to pick someone that transformed into my drag character, you know, like out of drag, I would maybe want to play me. Girl, there's only one me. There is only one me. One crazy personality that I am. And people don't really see my personality all the time. I am literally like crazy all over the place. Like just like crazy the June bug to every sense of that. So I think, girl, I'm an actor. I, I, can act. I am an actress. Cast three people to play me. Me, myself, and I. We will show up, we will be off book, we will be ready to roll. Director, show me my mark, take me to my place, give me my lighting, and I will play myself. What is your favorite type of whale? What? Do you think that you were robbed in RuPaul's Drag Race? Because we do. Well, thanks for believing me, loving me, and supporting me. Uh, I don't think I was robbed, to be honest. Like, all ego aside, I really don't think I was robbed. It was watching the show, like, yeah, like, living in the moment at that point in time, did I think it was my time to go? No, like, I, I thought that I had so much more to do in the show, but that was on me. Like, let's be completely honest. I get really upset when I see queens and hear queens in their final confessional moment saying like, I had so much more to do and to show. Well, it was our job and our responsibility to show what we have walking in the workroom day one, showing like, what can you do? What can you offer the world? What is like it that it's your message? What makes you different and sets you apart while you're special? In that moment, I probably thought like, oh, I still have more to show and more to do on the show. But to be completely honest, like it was my time to go. Like things just happen. Do I wish I would have stayed longer? Absolutely. But everything happens for a reason in life. Like it really does. So I'm gonna say lovey. But it is what it is. I've taken the time to just like reflect. Now I will say like when I was first eliminated from Drag Race, I I went through it. I completely and entirely went through it. I just thought I was rejected. I felt like I was a failure. I felt like I didn't make it to the final four and you know further in the competition and it was like my fault. I thought that I was less of a drag queen. I thought I was less of a performer and an entertainer. I just took it all so personally. And like looking back at it now and, and realizing that it's a process and like someone has to be eliminated every week. And sometimes if you just have a bad day, that's reason enough to eliminate you. It was my time to go and I'm okay with that. Like I've accepted that in life and I've moved forward and um, I'm, I'm celebrating life today. I needed those moments and those dark times on Drag Race to get to this place in life that I am today and to celebrate life, like truly. So thanks for eliminating me. <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing a drag musical theater cabaret? Oh, every day. It's coming. I, I am working on a one woman show right now. I'm working on putting together, what would I take on the road with just a show about me and musical theater cabaret in the works. You seem to be following a unique drag path, less camp and more glamour. Your music isn't novelty, it's the best pop. Less bar gig, more Broadway. Um, you think like a mogul. What are your ultimate goals? Wow, that is a loaded um, question, comment, concern, all the above, but thank you. You know, Aja said this so many times, um, Aja from season nine of RuPaul's Drag Race, 
and it baffles me when people try to put other people into a box and they try to say that you are this or you are that or how can you rise above this and they they, they, they try to categorize what what it is that you, you're doing I love music music has helped me really truly find my voice both literally and metaphorically and I am a singer and and I wanna create more music. An end goal for me is I want to be out there producing pop music that is just music. I look at myself as an artist, a musical artist, you know, a makeup artist. I look at myself as an artist and not just a drag artist. Um, I don't wanna be categorized or put into one box and told that I am this or I am good at being a drag musician. I wanna say like, no, you're a good musician. And I really wanna push those boundaries. I think sometimes people also put people in a box for being in the LGBT community. And they say like, oh, you have really great gay music. And I'm like, oh, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Music is music. I'm not putting a gender stereotype on my music and I'm not telling people what they can and cannot listen to or what they should and should not be. It, music is music. So let's focus on the music. What is your favorite Disney movie? <gasps> oh my gosh, I love Disney so much. I was just in Disney World about two months ago and I got my entire life. I haven't been to Disney World since I was in seventh grade. So yeah, you're looking at me and you're probably thinking, oh Blair, that was like, what, two years ago? And yeah, cute, <laughs> funny, funny. No, I haven't been to Disney World in, I was like 14, 10 years ago maybe. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's a long time. But I lived my best life and I got to meet my favorite Disney princess. So yes, at 23 years old, I lived my best life and I met Ariel because The Little Mermaid is my favorite Disney movie. It will always be my favorite Disney movie. She is the realest of fish because she's a mermaid and she's also a singing mermaid. So like obviously like I'm a singer and like fish and mermaid. Shall I go on? Shall I? What are your thoughts on the Tony nominations this year? <gasps> Girl! Throw it up. Um, as you know, I am a huge Broadway fan. I am like the biggest fangirl of all time when it comes to all things Broadway. I have my heart set on the Broadway stage someday. But the Tony nominations come out yearly where they nominate actors and actresses for the best actor and actress of the year in a new Broadway show. And they also nominate different shows to be the best musical of the year. They nominate different, you know, costumers and they nominate different hairstylists and lighting designers. And it's a huge, 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 huge event. I'm a little bummed for one reason in particular, that Beetlejuice the Musical came out this year. I didn't really grow up with the movie that much, but I saw the Broadway show and, um, the girl who played Lydia, her name is Sophia Ann Caruso, if I'm not mistaken. She was not nominated for a Tony this year. And I'm angry about it. She was so good. I'm just really frustrated because I thought she was incredible. But that just means that she's going to have so many more opportunities because I think she's like 17 or 18 years old and this girl, wig flew. The talent jumped out the window, like this girl is it. So good. If you could portray any musical theater character, who would it be? Well, my favorite musical is Big Fish the Musical. Let that be known. It's very special to me and I love the show. But this is going to sound campy, but it's not as campy as it actually is. I would play Elle Woods if I could in a musical because She's not just super bubblegum and rainbows and gay galore, but I love the message that Elle Wood sends. If you've seen Legally Blonde, she's very insecure and she just wants to be with her man, but she uses this arrogance to kind of like hide the fact that she's really insecure. And then she becomes a very empowered woman and she says, uh-uh, I don't need anybody in my life to complete me. I'm gonna completely myself and I'm gonna show the world what I got. And I just, oh, uh, oh! Uh! The music is good, it's pink, she's blonde, like... I'm gonna keep dreaming. What is your favorite costume or outfit that you've ever worn? Probably my finale gown that I wore for the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race in season 10. I love Mondo Guerra so much. He is the designer that really gets me. 
I like pushing fashion boundaries and, and going crazy, but you know RuPaul really coined the term, I do declare, and like obviously girl, I'm gonna keep it. But like I gotta finish that whole story moment and be like this big Southern Belle. That look just brings back so many memories. Like I, I, I just, I, I love, love that look. Are you in a relationship? Yes, I am in a relationship. I have been in a relationship for almost two years now. Um, I wear a promise ring always. So if you want to clock it, you can. I never take it off. It's probably the most special thing in my entire life. But we like to keep our lives as um, private as possible because privacy is very important. Do you put pineapple on pizza or are you normal? Well, I am far from normal. Let me tell you right now, I am the farthest thing. I am probably around the block, around the corner from ever trying to be normal. But no, I don't put pineapple on my pizza. Pass. What artist or musician inspires you the most? Demi Lovato. I am obsessed with this Demi Lovato. This is a Demi Lovato stan account. We, we, we love and we stan Demi Lovato. She is just everything I aspire to be. Incredible voice, incredible person, great morals and values. Like she works really, really hard and diligently in her career. And I don't fangirl over like anyone. And I don't get really excited over a lot of different celebrities. But if I met Demi Lovato, I would probably freak just because I respect her so much. I don't just like love her and want, and want to be her, but I respect her. And I, I know a lot of her struggle and, and I see her. I've also always wanted to collaborate with Choice Savon. I think that he is just really unique in creating like a really cool, rich, sexy, youthful tone to his voice. And I just love what he does. So like, Troy, if you're watching out there, let me know. I'm available, I'll clear my schedule. We'll make a video. Favorite underrated musical? That has to be Tuck Everlasting. It didn't do very well on Broadway, it was kind of snubbed, but if you've ever wanted to find a musical of something fun to listen to, that's very underrated, Tuck Everlasting. Do you like roller coasters? If so, what is the best one you've ever ridden? Yes, I am a roller coaster junkie! Like, put me on the fastest, craziest ride that has the most flips, the most turns, the most flip-flops, up and down, crazy, like. <sighs> Sign me up. Do you ever get frustrated with being put in a particular box or a category, such as a fishy queen? Um, well, being put in the category of a fishy queen is never a bad box to be put in. But I don't like putting people in boxes in general. I'm not about labels, like not about it. Sorry. What secret projects do you have going on right now with your career? You've been really secretive online about them. Well, secrets are meant to be secret. They're not meant to be explained. But I'm working on a couple really cool projects. I'm working on some really cool things that I'm excited about. Ugh, I hate like just vague booking all of it and just keeping it like quiet. But I'm working on movies. Let me see your girl on the big screen. I've been working really, really hard on auditioning for every little opportunity that's out there. So I've been auditioning for tons of TV shows, tons of movies. I have been auditioning for some live theater. So I could be going back to a live theater performance this fall, which that would be so mind blowing for me. Um, I'm also working on a new album that I'm collaborating with some really amazing people that are just taking my music to the next level. And that's the career I really want to develop. A lot of people want to know what's next for Blair St. Clair. Like, what do you want to do with your career and where do you want to go? Music is my biggest passion, music and, and performing, and performing my own music. So I'm trying to develop with some really, really exciting people right now. That's all I can say about that. I'm excited. That's all I'm going to say. I'm excited about it. My dream is to be the first breakthrough drag queen mainstream pop artist. We have some drag queens that are you know, breaking out into mainstream level of creativity and art all over the place, but we have yet to find any recording label that wants to sign a drag queen. And I like to throw it back and say like, okay, remember Hannah Montana girl? Remember Hannah Montana? She was that regular high school girl who put on the costume of Hannah Montana and that is what sold her music career and that, that, that's who she was. Now granted that was a silly Disney Channel show, but that's like what I think my persona is in music. And I put on a costume and I transform and that is what makes me an artist. And I wanna see 
more artists celebrated that might not just be immediately accepted into mainstream culture. I really, really, really want to see more drag artists and LGBT artists just really celebrated and accepted in mainstream cultures all over, no matter what it is, whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it is art, whether it is anything. What was your family's reaction when you told them that you did drag? There wasn't really much of a reaction. They kind of just always knew that I was a drag queen in the making. I mean, I was that little kid that used to wear the towel or like the t-shirt around their hairline that would do all the different hairdos with, with the, the fake hair and like put my mom's heels on and like dance around the house and put on shows for my family. So they knew, they knew well before that I knew. I, I never wanted to be a queen. I've always been a queen. I love your music videos. Are you coming out with any soon in the future? The answer is yes. Shh, that's kind of a secret. Kind of, like not really, but kind of a secret. Favorite ice cream flavor, chocolate chip cookie dough. And there's no other answer. Do you think there will be more Hoosier drag queens from Drag Race in the future? A Hoosier is someone that's from Indiana and that's where I'm originally from. And I really, really hope that there are future queens from Indiana representing Indiana on Drag Race. I was the first, but I say the first because I hope I'm not the last. There's a lot of queens from Indiana that I really respect and love and I hope they get on the show. Send in your tapes and get on the show. Let's represent where we're from. There is more than corn in Indiana. What is the square root of five? I feel like two, two is four. It'd be like 2.3. Two, yeah, square root is four, is two. Probably 2.3, I know math, I love math. I'm gonna check this right now. Calculator, oh, I'm really close! Hm. Thought you were gonna get me, girl. You probably thought you were gonna get me asking me what the square root of five was. Well, I was really close. Opinion on the season 11 queens. Release the freaking shade, why don't we? Like, let's just put on all the sunglasses. No. I really love a lot of the season 11 queens, but there are a few that are irking my nerves because I feel like some of the queens are just milking the opportunity of RuPaul's Drag Race for fame. And I don't see some of the same passion that I do in some of the other queens for the art of drag or performance or entertainment. And that bothers me greatly. But in general, I love the majority of the queens. So, next question. Okay, let's do one more. Are you excited for your 10 year high school reunion? I still got a few years before that. I don't want to think about, okay. I still have like, I still have like four years until my high school reunion. means I've been out of high school for six years. It's a long time. I'm not that old, right? But I think I'm gonna go to my high school reunion and drag. I wasn't popular in high school by any means, but I wasn't not popular. I wasn't picked on, I was accepted. I enjoyed it, I found my tribe, I found my group, but it definitely wasn't like something I love to be at all the time. Like I had my own struggles, but I would 1000% got back to my high school reunion in my most glamorous drag of all and just walk in and be like, yes, I'm here. I've arrived. The gaggery, the buffoonery. Mm, ah, it's giving me the most ideas right now. That was a loaded question because now my brain is going like, the ADD is kicking off. She said, oh, where are we? High school reunion drag. I'm excited now. Thank you guys so much for watching. That has been a full Q&A with Blair St. Clair, all the things that are going on in my life and all the questions that you have been dying to know. We've spilled a little bit of tea. We have gone through a little bit of the ins and outs of my personal life. We have dug deep down into the core of who I am and we've gotten a little emotional along the way. So I just wanna thank you guys for following me in my career and for all of the questions you've had about me and the things that are going on in my life and all the things that I may be up to. So please make sure that you're following me on all my different social media accounts, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And if you like this video, 
please make sure that you like it, give it a nice thumbs up, and subscribe down below so that way I can create many, many more videos just like this for you. So until next time. <laughs>